I'm not the only one, I'm sure, that has words with God this morning for the rain. Every single Sunday of All Saints Sunday, for all the years that I have been here, it's rained. And not just a little trickle, but a deluge. We thank you, God, for the rain. Amen. And I'm not going to finish that sentence. I'm so glad that you all are here joining together on this particular day in worship, in prayer, in praise, and in thanksgiving. We have so much to celebrate and to be thankful for and to continue in this journey. I am glad that you are here. I'm going to say something now because I probably will forget later. Some of you have little half sheets of paper that have names on them. Not everyone may have them, but, but many of you do. When we come to that part in our service, these are members of our church and those who are buried in our columbarium in, in the chapel. And when we come to this part, because this is All Saints Sunday, as well as the birthday of our particular church here in McAllister, we read these names. And in years past, we have read these names boldly and loudly and um, with great joy. And it was brought to my attention this week that maybe this year we do something a little bit different. And when we come to that part of the service, May we read these names solemnly and reverently and with great honor and whisper these names to our God and our Creator. So again, when we come to that part of our service, you merely read the names that are there on those sheets. And at the end of the service, leave those half sheets there in your pew because we'll come pick those up over the course of this next week. We begin our service with our opening hymn that is found there on the front page of your worship bulletin. Singing verses 1 and 4, would you stand? <coughs>
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated for the reading of the word.
Our gradual hymn follows there in your worship bulletin, singing verses 1 and 2, Would You Stand, as you're able. Figs have a very 
a curious history. First of all, they're technically <coughs> not a fruit, but an influity. I hear his voice saying that, actually. A set of fruits. And secondly, they need a slaughtered wasp to breed, an insect that dies inside the fig. I know, I'm gonna finish this sermon and all you're going to remember is the story about the figs. That's okay. In a nutshell, figs are a kind of inverted flowers that bloom inside this large, dark, red-hued bud we know as figs. Each flower produces a single nut and a single seed called an aquarium. The fig is made up of several branches, which give it this characteristic crunchy texture. Therefore, when we eat one fig, we are eating hundreds of fruits. But the most amazing thing, it's the special pollination process that fig flowers need to reproduce. They can't depend on weather, the wind, or the bees bring pollen as other fruits, so they need a species known as the fig wasp. There will be a quiz. <laughs> These insects transport their genetic material and allow it to reproduce. For their part, wasps couldn't live without figs as they deposit their larvae inside the fruit. This relationship is known as symbiosis or mutualism. Interesting intro there, Mother Janie, that you're starting your sermon with. A story of flowers that aren't flowers but fruit and wasps that die and deposit their, their larvae in what we eat. I mean, it brings a whole new nuance to my grandmother, y'all know her and I know her as Mima, making fig preserves, right? Brings a whole new layer of knowledge to what I enjoyed as a child. But I'll get to that. <coughs> Yesterday, many of us gathered in the parish hall to watch the investiture of Sean Rowe as our new presiding bishop. Our presiding bishops serve a term of nine years, and presiding bishop Michael Curry's term had ended, and we watched together as this service of our new presiding bishop, Sean Rowe, took office. And he, in his sermon, reflected on the passage from our gospel text this morning, and I'd like to share parts of that with you. He says, so here we are with Martha and Mary. We know them best perhaps as the passage from Luke where Martha is busy, busy, busy in the kitchen and Mary is sitting at the, at the feet of, of her rabbi and her teacher. Martha's doing all the housework and the busy work while <coughs> Mary sits and listens. Today, here in John's Gospel, just a few verses before our reading begins, things were much more serious than that. Lazarus, the brother of Mary, and Martha, the one Jesus loved, is dying. Jesus gets word that Lazarus is ill and that Martha and Mary want him to come. But he waits two days before he decides to show up. He knows the authorities in Bethany, where Lazarus is, are, are waiting to arrest him. And time is getting short. We're almost at the end of the story. Once Jesus is getting close to Bethany, Martha, true to form, runs out to meet Jesus. And presiding Bishop Michael Curry said, or sorry, Sean Rowe, I'm going to have to get out. It's going to take me a minute. Forgive the hiccups. 
Presiding Bishop Sean Rowe says, I can only imagine Jesus being relieved and thinking, great. Here comes Martha. She's the one who always does her homework. I can slip in a good teaching here, and he says to her, I am resurrection, and I am life. He who believes in me will never die. He's, he's in a bit of a hurry, but he gives one of the most powerful statements in all of the scripture, one that we all of us take to our graves in this lesson. Jesus again reminds us that the kingdom is here. It is right here near to us. And it is among us. He is the resurrection, the future promise, and the life. The here and the now. The now and not yet. The life that we have right here and now is among us. And Jesus can speak that word of life. And then they go to see Mary. And it's been four days since they laid Lazarus in the tomb. And she is weeping, and the people all around her are weeping. And the scripture says, Jesus wept. This time, instead of teaching, he commands, though, that the stone be rolled away. And at this point, it's not hard to be on Team Martha. Lazarus has been in the tomb for four days. In the heat. You want to roll that stone away right then at that time? Seriously, Jesus? <clears throat> then the scene that has captivated poets and novelists and painters and icon writers for millennia emerges. Lazarus, in grave clothes, comes out of the tomb. Because even in death, he had access to the voice of life. Even in death, he had access to that voice of life because Jesus is the word, the one who came from the beginning, the one who brought life into the world. And so Lazarus is dead, but he can hear life. He's dead, but he has access to life. And now we see what this is all about. All of the proclaiming and the teaching and the dying and the weeping. Lazarus is restored to life. But he's not restored to wholeness. Like Jesus didn't finish the job right then. And this is where the symbiosis, the mutualism, the community, Comes in. Instead, Jesus says to the gathered community, which must have been standing around terrified and bewildered, you do it. He says to the people, you do it. You unbind him. You liberate him. You set him free. Now this unbinding and this liberating of ourselves and our structures and our hurting world will take all the resilience we can muster. It will require us to set aside our disbelief, our divisions, our attachments to the things of this world, and maybe our attachment to the way we think things ought to function. But if we can be faithful in this work of unbinding, we will find that we become the stewards that God needs us to be of our congregations and communities. Because it is in these places, in the congregations, in the institutions, in the ministries that we have in this church, that's where ministry happens. It is in these places where we faithful Episcopalians and visitors that are among us welcome. This is where we gather, day after day, week after week, year after year. We worship God. We celebrate and mourn sorrows, and we care for God's people. 
In fact, presiding bishop Sean Rowe said, I believe that if it is in our gathered communities across the church where we come closest to glimpsing the real power of the story of Lazarus. Every single time we feed the hungry, we care for the sick, we clothe those who have nothing, we welcome the stranger. <coughs> we are reaching out in amidst the face of death. We have access to life even when death is all around us. Even when the nightmare of this world surrounds us, we have access to the life and the dream of God. As we baptize and bury God's people, we make disciples and proclaim the gospel as we soothe the suffering and shield the joyous. We are unbinding our congregation and setting a hurting world free. This sort of unbinding, though, is nothing less than standing against the lies of the enemy. This is the enemy who would keep us small, lifeless, hopeless. This is the enemy that would have us say, we can't do any better than we're doing right now. The enemy who would keep us bound and will keep us bound if we prize our own preferences, traditions, and comforts above the need to collaborate, to share, to work creatively, and to proclaim God. As we celebrate this All Saints Day, I want to share the words of Bishop Stephen Charleston. Many of you know him very well. He's got a couple of poems that I wish to share and close us in. This first one is the eternal grandparents. They are watching over us, all those who have gone before. They are our ancestors and they have seen enough in their own lives to know what we are going through. They have survived economic collapse, social unrest, political struggle, <coughs> even great wars that raged for years. Now, from their place of peace, they seek to send the wisdom into our hearts to guide us to reconciliation, to show us the mistakes before we make them. Their love for us is strong. Their faith in us is certain. When times get hard, sit quietly, and open your spirit to the eternal grandparents who are still a part of your spiritual world. Receive their blessing, for their light will lead you home. <coughs> this is to turn the wheel of history. To each generation, a task is given by a will and purpose greater than our own, a work to be accomplished, even without knowing the outcome, we are called, as if by an instinct of migration, something deep in our collective subconscious, a summons to see the moment clearly, to understand the implications, and, and then to respond, to act in order to change, to turn the wheel of history to save what must be preserved. Now is our time. This is our calling. We see the need. We know the consequences. Let us be about what must be done. Let us be about what must be done done. Amen. We continue with the statement of our faith that is the Nicene Creed following there in your worship bulletin and standing as you are able. 
We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, but one being with the Father, through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a bride from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people following the worship bulletin, kneeling as you are able. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Prophets of Southeast Asia. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for All Saints Miami. In our McAllister community of churches, we pray for Life Church, Living Word Church, the Main and Oklahoma Church of Christ. In our own All Saints family, we pray for Stratton Holt, Anita Humphreys, Randy Jeffries, Joessa and John Luke, Josh Jeffries, and Stephanie Johnson. Let us pray for the church in the world, including all Palestinians, Israelis, and their leaderships. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, be your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in death and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We give thanks for those in our All Saints family who have gone before us and walked this journey with us. You are welcome to pray and whisper the names of those you believe.
Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. providing to those who are in need. And we assume that 
okay, here's sermon part two, and it's going to be brief. But who's the one in need? The one who has the food scarcity and the, the rumbling tummy. Yeah, they're the person in need. But it's probably also the person who is volunteering who also has a need. A need for connection, a need for work, a need for service. And that's not to be dismissed or diminished either. As we will continue for many, many years to come, this work of feeding the needy in our community. A few announcements that we have tomorrow at 6 p.m. All are welcome to join here um, on November 4th for a nonpartisan prayer vigil before the elections on Tuesday morning. We will gather together in prayer. We will gather together in peace and silence as we come before God and we ask God for discernment. Um, we also, this is also, as Dorothy reminded me, thank you. Um, this is the first Sunday of the month. And on the first Sunday of every month, um, all undesignated money that is put into the collection plates will be given directly into the vicar's discretionary account. And what that does is anyone who comes to the church needing utilities to be paid, um, a gas bill, eyeglasses, prescription medication, uh, a motel stay for a night, we offer um, help. And for those who are in need, it serves them and it feeds us as well. And so again, any un undesignated or loose cash that's given in the collection plate goes to the vicar's discretionary account on the first Sunday of every month. And as a quick reminder, the if any of you have the list of names, just simply leave those in your pew when you're finished after the service and you go to the potluck luncheon afterwards. And would all the children come forward, please? Is. He's not going to hurry. He's not going to hurry. 
We move now to a time of Holy Eucharist and coming to the communion table together as we break bread and we continue our fellowship. You are welcome to come forward and to receive Holy Eucharist. You are also welcome to come forward. If you simply want a blessing, put your arms across your chest and fold your arms like this. And Deacon Wayne and I and probably the people to your left and your right will lay our arms, our hands on your shoulders and we will offer prayer for you, and you may continue to receive Holy Communion. We do not partake in the common cup still at this point, and so I will take the wafer, and we have gluten-free wafers, and we have alcohol-removed wine as well. If you do come forward and you need gluten-free, please let me know, just whisper that to me. And if you would prefer to have alcohol-removed wine, again, please whisper that to me. And I am the host, the, the wafer, and I hand it to you, and you take it from there. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into God's courts.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself, and when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, we who are many are made one because of the one bread.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And because we will be celebrating the potluck luncheon and I don't want you to be waiting, you may partake after this blessing as soon as you enter the parish hall. So let us bless the food now. This is a prayer written by Anne Case for Episcopal Relief and Development. O creator of all living things, we are all hungry in a world full of abundance. The possibilities of food for bodies and souls overflow in this beautiful world. We ask for the grace to see the abundance of our world and enough awareness to acknowledge our sins of greed and fear. Give us openness of soul and courage, willing hearts to be with our siblings who are hungry and in pain. We ask for your intercession on behalf of every person hungry for earthly food and hungry for the taste of the Spirit of God. We give thanks that we can be part of that intercession. This world is blessed with enough food of the earth for every person to eat and be satisfied. We can all feed on the bread of Christ through the Holy Spirit as God makes a home in our hearts. We come together in awe and wonder at the Creator who loves us so much that we are invited and urged to be co-creators with God in the care of our siblings. In the name of the tender mother, father, of all people who hears every cry. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is found there on the front page of your worship board and in standing as you are able. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah.